I had my first introduction to ballet when I was seven, and I hated it. And then when I became 10, I asked my parents if I could start ballet lessons, so that's when I seriously started. At the age of 13, my parents moved to DeKalb, Illinois, and then I continued my studies of ballet in Chicago, Illinois. I was actually the first declared dance major at Northern Illinois when they started their dance major. Ballet was it for me, and I, I just loved ballet. I really did. I loved doing point, and every single time I was able to perform just felt like a, it was my birthday. I haven't actually performed in about 11 years on stage, and boy is that difficult. It's a really hard transition to make. Ballet is the foundation for all dancers. Tap dancers can benefit from ballet. Belly dancers can benefit from ballet. Flamenco dancers can benefit from ballet. And due to all the things that we now know about the human body, people are dancing longer. They're dancing into their 40s. It, it's a wonderful thing. I actually saw Margot Fontaine perform by herself when she was probably 60 years old and was beautiful still. One must really have started training when they're a child, maybe eight or 10 years old, to become a ballet dancer. Their body has to be proportioned. They should be slim in the hips, long legs, long arms, very nicely arched feet, but strong feet, long neck, and not too big of a head. And the reason why most ballerinas you see are very slim is because of the dynamics of turning if the hips are wider than the shoulders, it's very difficult to do pirouettes. Making money as a dancer is a difficult thing. You must purely be in it because you love to dance, and that's going to be the biggest sacrifice. Most often dancers have to do some other kind of job. Even if you're in a dance company, you're not dancing 52 weeks out of the year. You might only have like a 32-week contract. Now. I'm firmly of the mind that you have to know when it's time to retire. It's really interesting to find out that many dancers go off to school and become medical doctors, lawyers, physical therapists, massage therapists. Some of them just become artists of a different type. So not all dancers decide to become teachers or choreographers when they're going to retire. I feel that, you know, I have a lot to give as a teacher. I've had a very successful career in offering classes for adults. I actually have some students that have been my students for about 15 or 16 years now. I started at Columbia in the fall of 1988. Right now I'm teaching dance fundamentals, which is for people that have had little or no training in ballet. And then I also teach two sections of ballet too. It's really nice to see how the kids that are the fundamentals, how much they grow in the first year. As far as the intermediate students go, that's a little bit harder. You have to push them a lot more, and lots of times people get stuck, kind of plateau. If you're going to be a dancer, you just have this passion. It's unbridled. It's do or die. You know, it's either you live that way or you don't. You really rise to a calling, I feel. And if you really love it and really want to do it, I feel that the hunger will get you there if you're really hungry for it.